here we are. Yes. Hello, sir. Good evening. And thanks for joining us today on the International Fab Talks show. We are glad to have your presence sir, here with us today. How was your day today, sir? I am very well. Thank you for asking. And it's my absolute pleasure to be here on your platform. Yeah. So how was your day today, sir? Uh, well, since I'm based in the Middle East, the weekend has already begun since last uh, last uh, yesterday evening. So today is Friday and uh, I'm doing each and everything to make the best out of my time with my family, with my friends and with my book readings. And yeah, whatever comes, you just uh, make the best of your time and effort. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing uh, from your end. That's really nice. Sir, would you like to share something more about yourself today for our audience? Some may consider me as the book bookworm. Some may consider me as an engineer or a med student. Or lately, some considered me as the uh, hidden, a hidden psychologist who never tries to reveal the outer world and prefer to live like a simple person, just like Keanu Reeves. Yeah. So I have personally grown up in the corporate world and uh, fast forward, then uh, some uh, life call actually began. So during that time, I not only shifted my career from corporate path to psychology, I also happened to excel. And at the moment, fast forward, I'm a counseling psychologist and also a happiness and a resilience practitioner and life coach and a learning specialist as well. So I do juggle many roles at multiple times and different days and different times. Besides my social roles, such as being a brother, being a, being a brother, being an uncle, and soon going to be husband and spouse, uh, husband oh. and... <laughs> great. That's great to know. And congratulations to that, sir, to that special phase of your life. <laughs> what is that one thing that would bring a smile on your face? one act of kindness at a time i mean it may sounds exactly verbatim when you the first time uh, there is one of the clips and also in a movie i don't remember it was by morgan freeman mm -hmm. so people like okay does my life has any meaning so far what kind of impact did, did i have on the world like is it the the other way around somewhere in your life you do end up belittling yourself what what changes have I brought within the society? What impact have I made within the world? And uh, has my life has any meaning? So I stop, the day when I stopped complaining, I have also shifted my lens of seeing and believing things in a different way. So one, one act of kindness at a time, do your best and leave the rest to the almighty. Yes, because there are certain things which are beyond our human powers. So you just do your best take care of yourself and have full faith in Almighty God. These three things I like live by every day. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for sharing uh, that beautiful vision of yours that you have and you're practicing it too at the moment, I guess. So uh, may I know which is your favorite color and why? Mm, great question. But the answer is very broad. Uh, it, it depends on the situation and it depends on the occasion and it depends on uh, the preferences. There are times I may prefer black. I mean, men <laughs> usually go with the black because black is among the only color where it can go like anytime, anywhere. And the second one I would prefer is white or beige. Yes. So white or beige. The third one is kind of uh, white and silver. And there are times I may prefer to have uh, turquoise or emerald or maroon. Yeah. Wow. So you have a host of colors that you're attracted to and value in your life. That's beautiful. Uh, you know, that's really nice to know, sir. Yes, sir. Do you remember any of your childhood incidents or any one incident which you can never forget during your childhood? It should be a positive incident. Let it have a positive impact on our audience. There was uh, one of my, I wouldn't say just neighbor, but he also happens to work in my dad's company. And after my dad, he was the one who actually spent time with me and he actually mentored me and he even watched me and he even believed me saying, you know what, okay, 
prepared, regardless of how things get like challenging. I'm sure, and I believe one day you would rise up to the ranks. One day you would certainly change the lives of the people, regardless of how big or small they are. And yet you would still prefer to be among the unsung heroes. So whenever you are in the most um, challenging times, you are still among the most richest one because you have a food on your table and you got a roof on your head. You have a shoes on your feet and you have your clothes. And yet, regardless of how challenging you are, I mean, you are meeting your basic necessities. So why do you compare yourself, the ones who are the same or like above your level, where there are people who are beneath your status and yet they yearn for those things. They, they hurdle. They, they hurdle and like hustle so many things just to meet their end. So don't complain it. Just have full faith in yourself and like almighty God. Do your best and leave the rest to God. Only. Yeah. Beautiful, sir. Thank you very much for that lovely answer from your side. So if there was one thing that you could change in this entire world, what would that be? The first thing I would start is uh, if you look right now there are certain places such as schools such as some um, institutions there we are missing our morals we are we're like missing our values i mean they're not the same how it used to be if we look 50 60 years ago and uh, the part of self-interest among prevailing self-interest among like others is something i see in the most detrimental issue because when i found that after your own family, after your own parents, where does the child spend the most of the time? In schools. So in schools, teachers are not actually abiding or like adhering to what what major role do, do they have? Because being a teacher is a huge responsibility. Either you could create maggots out of them or you could kindle their minds and uh, foster them to to bloom and blossom. So, I've said, so there's two two faces of like every coin. There's one side is kindling and the other time they are kind of deteriorating. So the the one who's actually deteriorating the the generation, the future generation, it's going to have like a huge cost because we are certainly have forgotten about our own values and about our own, not just morals, but also what do we hold for and what do we believe in and why, why do we have, I mean, what are the certain things that we have to keep in our life, like right, regardless of how things change. So it's not actually the trends; it's actually the responsibility you are given on your shoulders. So make sure when you pass them, make sure you pass the baton from one generation to another. As my predecessors, as my school teachers have done with me, they have entrusted me like over the time, and I still wonder, God knows how. And I did my best. And till now, the younger generation right now, they keep reaching out to me and they told me, you know what, reaching up to you, it's, you haven't compelled us, but the way how you interact with us, the way how you interact with people, we felt that you are an approachable person and we felt really comfortable. So you have to, what I'm trying to say is the individual differences are not very readily acceptable, are not, has not reached to that acceptable phase. Because our, some of, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to start any blame game or something like that. Because some of from the previous generation, they actually played the victim game or they actually blame about maybe the society is, maybe this generation or your generation has no value. They don't concern about this thing. They don't value certain things. So this kind of generation would never understand. Well, the past gen generations have been doing the similar cycle. And among them, they have actually told me to not to repeat the cycle. You have two choices. Either you could break it to confront and you could pass the baton or you could do it. Okay, saying that maybe that virtue was not acceptable during that time. So that is going to have like a detrimental effect for a long time. So I would say is not just speak about rights, but also to place a greater emphasis on responsibilities. Because yeah. law... Because uh, as we have previously done the leadership program, many teachers are like unaware what are the students are like often not just space like in, in like academically, but what about socially? What about professionally? What about like in other domains? Okay, pro professionally it comes afterwards, but how are they socially engaged? They are learners. They have, they hold different views 
and they have different values, they have different interests. So you have to speak based on the level of understanding. You have to treat them based on the level of understanding and you have to kindle their minds based on their level of understanding and based on their audacity. So everything has its own. So there is no such thing as jack of all the traits. So yes. you have to know that what are your like limitations and at the same time, you have to know your responsibility because there are certainly times that a teacher is actually doing the counselor's work. So that's not going to have a greater like impact. Okay, you can morally have, uh, you, you can morally support someone else, but, but playing some other roles where you are not actively involved, not trained, is, uh, is going to say kill or cure. Yes, absolutely, sir. That's really brilliantly answered. And thank you for that, you know, uh, great insight and depth into uh, making us understand how a teacher should look and treat the students, maybe her own children and maybe the students that she has to take care of. Dear sir, I have another question for you, sir. May I go with the next question? Yes, please. I'm all ears. Yes, sir. Do you have any dream projects for the future? I, I have plenty and I prefer not to disclose like all of them in details. The one thing I would say is, uh, like I'm a big believer in lifelong learning. I mean, regardless of how old you are, how old or young you are, regardless of what your discipline is, whether you come from literature, whether you come from psychology, whether you come from corporate world, you have to keep that lifelong learning. Yes, because uh, many are still neglecting. They, they only open the books. They only open the only use of the skills when they are in some kind of institutional walls. So things are being neglected and in one way or like another. So keeping a lifelong learning is also not only benefiting you, but it's also sharpening your cognitive skills at the same time. Excellent. So Brilliant. lifelong learning, mm -hmm. I would say, uh, like I would place a greater emphasis on lifelong learning. Excellent. Brilliant. So now we have a rapid fire section. Sure. Go ahead. Yes. And uh, be ready for it, sir. And you just need to answer either yes, no, or in one sentence. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. We'll start with our rapid fire section now, sir. Do you have a favorite author? Yes and no. Uh, may, may I know who is your favorite author? Nick Bilton, the person who actually wrote The American Kingpin. What is it to be like a famous person? I never know until I reach over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. What makes you laugh the most? Uh, uh, small things can create a huge impact. Mm -hmm. Would you support a zoo or a sanctuary and why? I would support conservation parks because they have their more wider spaces and they seems to be more attuning and um, catering the needs of each and every animals in the place. Yeah. Yes, sir. we jump into the next question as it's a rapid fire question. Question a session. How many languages do you speak? Uh, six languages. Cool. That's really you know awesome, sir. On a scale of one to ten, how much would you rate yourself with regard to forgiving others? Hmm. Great question. I honestly haven't thought about it, so I will pass about it. So I don't uh, prefer to go with the quantitative analysis. I would go with the quality of it. So no comments on that. Okay, cool. We'll accept that, sir. Yes, sir. Are you a good listener or a speaker? Both. Wow, cool. That's nice. Wonderful. In fact, we have to balance our speaking and listening skills. Uh, much appreciated, sir. What superpower do you wish that you had? Uh, I wish I could be a Batman. Yeah, so Batman on playing Bruce Wayne at the same time. Yes. <laughs> cool. That's nice. We'd love to see you in a getup of Batman in any of these days. Yes, sir. Uh, should mental health be prioritized? And if yes, why? In oh, one like sentence. Oh, like absolutely. I mean, uh, without putting mental health into the like, equation, it's kind, it's incomplete to when it comes to taking care of your health. 
Cool, sir. That's nice. That's really brilliantly answered. Another question for you, sir, today is which was your favorite or what was your favorite subject in school? One word. Arabic. Cool. That's really nice. Thank you so much, sir. Another question that, uh, lining up here for you is, is the glass half full or half empty? I repeat my question. Is the glass half full or half empty? How would you my look at it? I would not look half half full or half empty. I would instead bring out the measurable bucket or something and I would measure into ML. <laughs> That's how I do things. <laughs> Except it, sir. Do you love pets? If yes, which pet? Oh, I love pets. Cats and dogs and like any domestic animals. Yes, I love them. Yes. Name any two hobbies that you still pursue. Um, Calligraphy and painting and drawing. What makes you laugh the most? Um, being a good listener to someone else. Okay, cool. That's really nice. Would you rather win a lottery or work a perfect job? I repeat my question for you. Would you rather win a lottery, lottery or work a perfect, perfect job? I would rather work on a perfect job because winning a lottery isn't going to give you that kind of satisfaction the amount you put your actual work into it so i like i'm up to like the ones you actually work up with your bare hands is far more beneficial than winning a lottery because right. the content is the same yes now there's a question if at all you had a time machine if at all you had a time machine and you had the capacity to go back into the past which great personality would you want to be known as or you would like to you know imitate or live that life of somebody from the past i would obliterate the time machine because what 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 things are done are done and if you're going to do undone things so things are not gonna i mean they, there's gonna be a huge cost and consequences i mean they were there for the purpose that's why you are here right now so I would not, uh, I would break the time machine and I would live the present moment to make the best out of it. Superb. So that's really a you know, fabulous answer. Much appreciated. What makes you unique? Uh, what makes you unique, Mr. Mudasir, sir? Authenticity. This Ooh. is something that we are not actually taught in schools and universities. And so very rare places thing where people actually speak, okay, like, you know, I mean, You'll definitely find, I mean, there are doctors, there are engineers, there are highly competent professionals out there. Mm -hmm. what, what makes you unique is your authenticity that people want to see who you are. They don't want to see any yes. uh, any kind of copycats of yes. any or like artist. Yes. As it is a rapid fire, we'd like to get a single sentence as an answer or a word. Who is your inspiration? In one word, please. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What were you like a kid? Notorious, mischievous, humble, obedient. One. Obedient. Mm -hmm. How do you manage stress in your job? One word. You seek the help of like almighty Allah to like alleviate from that stress. Yeah. Yes. What is your favorite movie? Over the Hedge. It's a cartoon. Mm -hmm. That's really nice to know, sir. And the final question for our rapid fire today is, when do you plan to retire? When do you plan to retire? Yes, sir. It brings me my attention to some of the major entrepreneurs. They say there is no such thing as retirement. I mean, you just live up to it. You just live up to it and you do your best. I mean, like even though you may retire from the workplace, but that doesn't mean you're retired from life. So I would say you keep working until your last breath and you do your best. You, you serve the community. So far you have worked for the community. So I would probably dedicate more time to pay back the community that 
during that phase. Excellent, sir. We are really honored to have your presence here today to share your thoughts and views on the professional level and as well, you know, benefiting the audience, the universal audience who will be viewing and understanding the concept that you have in mind today and always. Much appreciated. Yeah. You know, yeah. We thank you for your time. We thank you for all the beautiful answers. And you've been very respectful and dignified on this platform, sir. Uh, we wish you all the best in all your endeavors and wishing mo many more unions with you here on our platform, the International Fab Talks 2023 show. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, Thank before you. we conclude this session, I'd like to once again ask you to share with us your favorite quote. Which quote comes to your mind often and why? In just two sentences. There's a one quote by Einstein. If you judge a fish by its ability, it would judge itself to... I can't remember the exact wording, but it's say it would live up to it believing itself that it's stupid. So you can't judge and like measure uh, like everyone else based on what they do because the fish and each and every animal has their own optimalities and functionalities as well. So you can't judge everyone and on a one single platform. No, everyone has their own unique strengths and own capabilities as well as their own resources to bring on the table. So each and every one would perform differently and would contribute differently. Yeah. Excellent, sir. Today, we thank you for your uniqueness and for your humbleness that you have joined us today at short notice. Thank you very much, sir. Signing off, your host, Crystal Sean. Thank you very much, Mudasir, sir. You're very thank welcome. You. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, just a second. One second, please. We'll just do this. Kindly be for a few minutes, just a second. We'll just end the session. Just a moment, sir. Yes, sir. so there was the host control and so then we've shared the host control. So thank you very much team. Thank you Mudasir sir once again. And those moments of silence where you're working on some technical issue or on any given issue, you have to put your mind, body and soul into it. So thanks Mudasir sir, have a lovely day. We thank all our audience, Tan Lakshmi ma'am, uh, Crystal Sean and the others who are present here today. Thank you very much. And we end our session today. Thank you so much and stay blessed. Just give us a moment before we end our session and conclude our session. Yes. Boss is there.